Be it warehouses, factories, shopping malls, or museums, there are some places that have an absolutely massive amount of floor space. Let's take a look at the top 15 biggest buildings in the world. Number 15. Ulsmere Flower Auction Building while your local flower shop may have a good selection of flowers on offer, chances are that the Ulsmere Flower Auction is home to far more variations than you could ever imagine. Happening within the 5.5 million square foot Ulsmere Flower Auction Building, it's home to flowers from all over the world. About 20 million are sold every single day, with this number rising up to about 23 million around Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. All of them go through about 30 quality checks to ensure they're good enough to be sold, and each flower batch receives a banking on three-point scale, so that buyers know how valuable they truly are. The auctions are set up in such a way that bids start very high and work their way down, meaning that if you don't accept an offer first, you lose out on the entire batch, and once sold, these will generally be distributed across the world. With the market reportedly representing about 60% of the entire global wholesale flower trade, Therefore, it goes without saying that this building is extremely important. Number 14. The New Century Global Center Of all the large buildings out there, few have quite as many purposes as the New Century Global Center. That's because it not only has more than 18 million square feet of floor space, but it's home to a plethora of services. With these including, but not limited to, business offices, hotels, theaters, high-end shopping malls, a faux Mediterranean village, an Olympic-sized skating rink, a pirate ship, and university complexes. Completed in Chengdu in China 2013, it is by far one of the area's most notable buildings, as it's the center of a lot of commerce within the city. Therefore, if you ever get the chance to visit Chengdu, you would be remiss not to check it out. Number 13. St. Peter's Basilica while there are plenty of large churches out there, none are quite as large as St. Peter's Basilica. Located within the Vatican City, it has an area of 160,000 square feet, makes it the largest church in the world, and anyone who visits can attest to its beauty. Completed all the way back in 1626, the entirety of the church is filled with massive Renaissance-era statues and paintings, and its large 42-meter wide dome gives the building a sense of grandeur that just can't be matched. As far as the quality of the artwork within goes, it's simply incredible, as most of it was created by Renaissance maestros such as Bernini, Bramante, and Michelangelo. Therefore, whether you're Christian or not, we definitely suggest giving this impressive building a look. Number 12. The Great Mosque of Mecca As far as large buildings go, few are quite as incredible as the Great Mosque of Mecca. Located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, this 4,314,000 square foot building surrounds the Kaaba, which is the most sacred place in the world according to the Islamic faith. Now, this magnificent mosque was supposedly first built when Muhammad was still alive, yet over the years the wealthy Saudi state has expanded it. The most recent of these expansions was completed in 2019, and as a result the mosque now has a capacity for over 4 million worshippers at any one time. However, due to COVID-19, the amount of worshippers allowed inside has decreased significantly, with an occupancy rate of about 30% being strictly followed. Yet despite the restrictions, the faithful continue to travel to the mosque in droves. Number 11. The Tesco Donabate Distribution Center If you happen to hail from the UK or Ireland, then chances are that you've heard of Tesco. By far one of Great Britain's largest grocery store chains, it has thousands of locations, and Ireland certainly has its fair share of them. Unsurprisingly, it takes a lot of warehouse space to facilitate the merchandise in these stores, and thus Tesco currently owns one of the largest warehouses in the world. Located in Donabate, Ireland, it measures in at 860,000 square feet, and was completed in 2007 at a cost of around 60 million pounds. It's laid out into 87 aisles of 31 bays, and its carrying capacity of 76,000 pallets is enough to handle all of Ireland's Tesco locations. In total, the facility employs over 6,000 people and handles up to 1.5 million cases per week, making it one of the busiest warehouses in the world. We'd bet just getting a quick look at it would be impressive. Number 10. The Meyer Veft Shipyard Shipbuilding requires a lot of space, as something like a cruise liner or oil tanker cannot be built in cramped quarters. And while there are many shipyards out there, the Maya Veft shipyard is easily one of the world's most famous. 
Located along the Ems River in Papenburg, Germany, its construction was completed all the way back in 1795. And while it wasn't always at its modern-day size of 680,000 square feet, the expansions over the years have allowed it to be one of the most modern shipyards around. In its early days, the shipyard would only construct small wooden ships, and then in 1874 it began making much larger iron ships. And finally, in the modern age, it specializes in high-quality cruise ships. Over the years, about 700 ships of different types have been built at the yard, and now employs over 3,300 people. Incredibly enough, it's still a privately owned family company, and it even had the privilege of building Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas, which at the time of its construction held the Guinness World Record for having the highest viewing deck on a cruise ship. So Meyer Weft has rightfully become an anchor on the European route of industrial heritage. And to this day, it's easily one of Germany's most important shipyards. Number 9. Romania's Palace of Parliament while parliamentary buildings tend to be quite large in size, few quite match the grandeur of Romania's Palace of Parliament. That's because at an area of 3.9 million square feet and a weight of 4.1 million tons, it's both the heaviest building and the third largest parliamentary building in the world. Located in the capital city of Bucharest, it not only houses both Romania's Senate and Chamber of Deputies, but also a collection of three museums and an international conference center. The building was inspired by the massive legislative building in North Korea, and after construction began in 1984, it took it all the way until 1997 for the building to be completed in its entirety. When it comes to the materials used, the sheer quantity and quality was simply outstanding, as the building features 3,500 tons of crystal, 700,000 tons of steel and bronze, a million cubic meters of marble, and 900,000 cubic meters of wood, with almost all of this being sourced locally in Romania. In terms of the end result, the building now has a total of 1,100 rooms, although reportedly a total of 700 of them are simply unfurnished and unused. So we'd think you'd agree that the work and materials put into this building were a tad bit excessive. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Dubai Mall if you're looking to do some world-class shopping, then look no further than the Dubai Mall. Holding the record for being the largest mall in the world by total land area, it's part of the $20 billion downtown Dubai complex and includes over 1,200 shops. While this may seem a little extreme since the mall was visited by 84 million people in 2019 alone, owning a shop there certainly is lucrative. This makes it one of the most visited sites on the planet. If the majority of those who go to the Dubai Mall aren't just there for shopping, that's because its 5. million square feet of space is more than enough to facilitate several attractions. One of the most notable is the Dubai Aquarium, an underwater zoo, which has more than 300 species of sea creature on display. The Dubai Mall is also home to the VR Park, which is a 76,000 square foot indoor park that not only features 15 rides, but also has an array of amusement games such as motion simulators, classic carnival games, skill games, and redemption games. Beyond these two flagship attractions, the mall also has a movie theater, rainforest cafe, dinosaur skeleton, and a kid's zone. Therefore, it's not hard to see why so many people have decided to give the mall a visit. Number 7. The Tesla Factory While there are countless factories across the world today, none are quite as well known as the Tesla Factory. Located in Fremont, California, the shell of the building was actually not built by Tesla, but was instead constructed in 1966 by General Motors, and at its height it was pumping out more than a thousand cars per day. However, after several years the company began to falter, and in 1984 it was partially taken over by Toyota as part of a joint venture. However, even this couldn't last forever, and in 2010 Tesla purchased the property, modernized it, and as a result they now have a massive 4.6 million square foot factory. The plant currently manufactures the Model S, Model 3, Model X, and Model Y. And as of 2018, a total of 10,000 workers were creating these high-tech cars. And while there have been many safety concerns recently, after all, Musk came under fire for suing the local county after they shut them down because of the COVID pandemic, they are now operating almost as per usual. Number 6. Beijing Daxing International Airport while airports tend to be quite large, none quite match the size and scope of Beijing's Daxing International Airport. Completed on June 30th of 2019, its main terminal is a massive six-sided starfish-shaped structure that comes in at 7.5 million square feet. For reference, that's the approximate size of 98 soccer fields. 
Yet, if their estimates on the amount of traffic they'll receive are correct, then the 72 million annual passengers may need all of that room. Now, the entire airport cost an incredible $11 billion to build and has a number of impressive features, with these including a 400-strong set of check-in kiosks, biometric scanners to check for prohibited items, and smart security checks in order to help shorten queuing times, while maintaining high levels of safety. Yet beyond the airport-related features, what really makes Beijing Dashing special is that the designers created what is practically a miniature city within its main terminal as it has over 70 restaurants, 5G cellular connection, interactive LED screen art, and a plethora of retail options. So we wouldn't be surprised if Beijing Dashing becomes a tourist attraction in its own right once the pandemic is over. Number five, the Boeing Everett factory. Boeing 747s are easily some of the largest airplanes on the market today. And thus, in order to make them, Boeing needs to set aside a serious amount of space. And while there are multiple Boeing factories across the world, none are quite as expansive as Boeing's Everett factory. Located in Everett, Washington, it takes up about 4.28 million square feet of space, making it the largest airplane factory in the world. To put this size into perspective, the entirety of Disneyland could fit within its walls and still have about 780,000 square feet left over. Now, the factory was first built in 1967 after Boeing received a modern equivalent of a $4.2 billion contract to build Boeing 747 airplanes for Pan American Airways. From there, it underwent numerous expansions, and these tended to fall in line with the increased size of its newest aircraft, be they the 757, 777, or 787. Now, Everett was chosen to be the location for the factory largely because of its access to rail lines and roadways, yet actually obtaining the land proved to be difficult. That's because many who owned land in the area didn't want to sell, and this led to Boeing seriously overpaying in order to get the deal to go through. In fact, in many cases, landowners took advantage of the company by only agreeing to sell after Boeing gave them 10 times the market price for their properties. When combined with the cost of clearing and leveling the heavily forested land, building the factory itself and constructing the infrastructure around it, the grand total came to the modern equivalent of $8 billion, which was more than the value of the entire company at the time. Regardless, this expensive facility certainly ended up paying off, as Boeing is now one of the most recognizable airplane companies around. Number four, the Jean-Luc Lagardier plant. While Boeing's Everett factory may be the world's largest airplane factory, Airbus's Jean-Luc Lagardier plant comes in at a distant second. Located in toulouse blagnac in southern France, it comes in at a massive 1.3 million square feet. This space is necessary because it's the assembly hall of the Airbus A380, which is one of the world's largest commercial airliners. Now, the need to build such a building arose on January 10th of 2003, when Airbus passed a 100-order threshold. Since their current facilities were inadequate, the construction of this new plant began. In total, about 35,000 tons of steel were used for the structures of the plant's industrial buildings, and these were constructed primarily out of a mix of rolled sections and welded plate girders. Of all the rooms in the building, the main assembly hall is the largest, as it comes in at about a length of 250 meters, a width of 115 meters, and a height of 46 meters. Just the facade of the assembly hall consists of 2,500 tons of steel, while the roof, which accounts for an area of 121,000 square meters, is covered by self-supporting trapezoidal steel sheets. And while it certainly took a lot of material, the factory was finally completed in 2004 and has been pumping out airplanes ever since. If you have any interest learning about the ins and outs of the factory, you can even book a tour, which by most accounts is pretty in-depth. After all, Airbus goes to great lengths to show those on tour everything the factory has on offer, with these including a tour of the telemetrics room, the hangars filled with planes, the assembly line, and the top floor which provides a panoramic view of both the factory floor and the 3,000 employees below. So it goes without saying that the Jean-Luc Lagardier plant is pretty impressive. Number three, the Arium. Some of the world's largest buildings tend to be airplane manufacturing centers, and the Arium is certainly no exception. However, unlike most airplane factories, the Arium was repurposed into, of all things, an indoor theme park. Now, its roots date back to 1938, when the Nazi regime built it as an airfield near the East German town of Krausnick. Once the war was over, it was occupied by the Soviet Union, who held it until 1992, when it was returned to a now united Germany. It was in this very same year that a company by the name of Cargo Lifter AG bought the former military airfield to construct airplanes. 
So they soon got to work on building a massive construction hall. And once all was said and done, the 60 meter long, 210 meter wide, and 107 meter high structure came in at a massive 750,000 square feet. To this day, it holds the record for being the world's largest single hall without supporting pillars inside. And in the year 2000, it was commissioned to build and house cargo lifter CL-160 aircraft. However, after Cargo Lifter went bankrupt in mid-2002, this idea fell by the wayside, and on June 11th of 2003, it was purchased by Malaysian corporation Tangjong PLC at a cost of just 7.5 million euros, which was more than 10 times less than the 78 million euros originally spent to build the structure. With this deal of a lifetime in hand, they soon began to create a massive indoor theme park, completed on December 19th of 2004 theme park, which is known as Tropical Islands, sports the largest indoor rainforest in the world. A beach, several swimming pools, water slides, bars, and restaurants, and rather impressively, a constant temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. And while it had some trouble at first due to it receiving lower amounts of guests than expected, business has picked up as a result, and it can still be visited today. Number 2. NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building Building spaceships is certainly a complicated affair, yet at NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building, the entire operation can be run under one roof. Now, the building comes in at 32,374 square meters, and while that may seem relatively small for a building on this list, it's more than made up for due to it being the sixth largest building in the world by volume. The reason for this discrepancy is that the building is not just wide, but also very tall. And at a height of 160 meters, it's one of the largest single-story buildings in the world. It is single-story because it was designed to accommodate the vertical assembly of the Saturn V rocket for the Apollo program. And after the building was completed in 1966, it became the post-production assembly plant for a number of massive projects, with some of the most notable being parts of the space shuttle program. In order for these shuttles to be launched, they would be released from one of four doors located around the building all of which hold the record for being the largest doors in the world. That's because they're made out of a series of vertical and horizontal panels that stack up to an incredible 139 meters high. And due to their stature, they take up as much as 45 minutes to completely open or close. Now, in order to create the spacecraft, the building houses a total of five overhead bridge cranes, plenty of smaller tools, and a conglomeration of 125 air ventilators to ensure that the inside of the building doesn't create its own rain clouds, which is entirely possible due to its size. Yet, in recent years, the building has seen a bit of a lull. After the space shuttle program was canceled in 2011, the future of the building was put into question. But soon after, NASA began to look into using the building to make launch vehicles and reusable space capsules. However, only time will tell whether or not the creation of these spacecraft will come into fruition. Number 1. The O2 As far as entertainment complexes go, few are as large as the O2. Located in Southeast London, it was opened on January 1st of 2000 as the Millennium Dome, and it originally housed the Millennium Experience, which was a major exhibition that essentially celebrated the start of the second millennium. At an area of 1.1 million square feet, it's incredibly large. However, after this exhibit closed down on December 31st, it was sold by its original owners to Meridian Delta Limited. They then subleased the O2 to Enschutz Entertainment Group, and after years of construction, it was finally reopened on June 24th of 2007. The site is home to an indoor arena, a music club, a Cineworld cinema, an exhibition space, piazzas, bars, and restaurants, making it a one-stop shop for a whole host of events. Out of all the venues at the O2, the O2 Arena is one of the most impressive. A 20,000 capacity arena, it has been the site of everything from events at the Olympic Games to live music performances, and it's largely considered to be the first American-style multi-purpose arena in London. The Indigo O2 is another famous venue, as it's essentially a 2,750-person capacity nightclub that hosts live music for club events, after shows, corporate events, and private events. There's also the O2 Bubble, which is a massive exhibition space that can be used as a pop-up museum. Up at the O2, which is a 190-meter walkway along the roof of the O2, that provides incredible 360-degree views of the city, and the Avenue, which is a massive shopping mall. So, if you're looking for something fun to do, then we'd suggest checking out the O2. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.